Production funding for Sports Files is made possible in part by... Infinity of Memphis has moved to Germantown Road just half mile north of Wolf Chase Galleria and is proud to support WKNO for its quality broadcasting and service to our community. Quality and service? No wonder Infinity of Memphis feels at home on WKNO. The WKNO Production Fund, the WKNO Endowment Fund, and by viewers like you. Thank you. My guest today on Sports Files is Memphis Redbirds first baseman, Dan Johnson. <laughs> think of minor league baseball, you often think of younger players developing their skills with the hope that one day they will get their shot in the bigs. And that assessment would be quite accurate. But every once in a while, you see a veteran hoping to get one more shot at glory. And for the Redbirds, that would be 35-year-old first baseman Dan Johnson. The Minnesota native is playing in his 15th season of pro baseball with four-plus years of service in the majors. Dan has had some tremendous moments playing America's pastime and is hopeful he can make some more memories. Well, Dan, thanks so much for being with us. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. All right, tell me about so far your stay, you and your family, you got four kids in Memphis. What do you think about the Bluff City? It's awesome. I mean, and, and, and the convenience that we've had moving here and, you know, coming here and being able to walk to the ballpark, um, having so many restaurants uh, close by, um, two targets, which makes it life easy for my wife and, and uh, the kids, you know, a couple parks nearby, uh, getting the lay of the land. It's, it's been enjoyable so far. Must be something to have um, a wife and four kids. Of course, you got two little ones, but the stops you have made in your career. I mean, they have to have uh, pa uh, patience as a virtue and, and certainly to have that when dad says, uh, we're, we're leaving, we're moving, um, that's something. It is, it is. We were talking about this just the other day. Um, we're somewhere over a hundred moves wow. already as a family. And that's like complete pick up and move to a different town, city, wherever we're going. What's, so. it like, what's it been like for you um, on the field? I know you've had some real good games. The numbers look good. How do you feel out there uh, playing at AutoZone Park with the Redbirds? You, this is one of my favorite ballparks um, that I've played in, especially in the minor leagues. I, I think they did such a great job with like um, the background. They did a great job of having a good hitter's eye, and they have great lights. And you know, as a hitter, it, you know, seeing the ball is like key to hitting. And and they did a great job when they designed this ballpark. But having played as long as you have had have played 15 years in professional ball and you played with five different teams in the bigs, your service is well over four years of service. But at 35, I mean, you're you want that that call up I and mean, no matter what yeah. happens and what they got to do. Yeah. And if uh, if it doesn't work out, and they got to release it. You're here to get that next opportunity. Exactly. I mean, I, mean, I don't play the game for the minor leagues. You know right. what I'm saying? Like I, I play this game so that I can compete at the highest level, you know, because I know I can do it. And I've been in the situations um, the the. My life, like, I, I just live for that competition and, you know, to be so competitive and know that I can still do it and just need that opportunity again. So every year I come out and I have to grind it out till, till the, the time is, is you're called upon. And then when you go out there, you got to do it. Are you still having fun? Oh, yeah, I mean, how can you not? You know, 35 years old playing a kid's game. Well, Dan, we were talking about your wife having the patience yes. uh, with all the moves you've made. You were drafted in 2001 by the A's. You didn't get your call up to the major leagues until 2005. With that sense, that's, that's four years of toiling in the minors till you got your opportunity. So you obviously have a lot of patience. For young players that may ask you for advice, but they're impatient, especially today, it seems like a lot of youngsters, no matter what field, they're, they're impatient. They want to get things going right away. What would be your advice to them? Well, I mean, you know, it's, it's great to get there, but it, it's also better to be prepared because once you get there, it's it's a lot easier coming back down than it is getting back up. So what I what I've been trying to teach, especially now, like um, you know, like a team like this, a young team, I, I tell them I'm not teaching them how to get to the big leagues. I'm trying to teach them how to stay in the big leagues. Right. And you know, patience is part of it. You know, if you if you get up there and you struggle and then you come back down, you like that plays big mind games. And 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 mind games is 
is going to work r like really against you once you get up there because once it happens, you know, it's, you're under a microscope and you got all cameras, you got all these people that are critiquing you and it starts to wear you out. So what I, what I try to tell them is, you know, like you, you, once you're ready, you're ready and, and believe it's the same game that you're playing here, except for, you know, just um, a little bit bigger stage. But how have you been over to, uh, to overcome it? Because you've been up and down, up and down, up and down, but you've always brushed yourself you know, off and, and got back up yep. into the plate, into the batter's box and, and knocked one out and got another opportunity. Five different teams. You played professionally in Japan. So you keep yeah. finding a way to, to get back up. That's, how do you do it? I mean, that's, that's it. The tenacity, you know, like, right. you know, if you say I can't, you won't, you know, and, and I feel like I put enough work in. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to ever lose my job to somebody outworking me. Like, I, I always want to be able to look in the mirror and say, I did everything I could. And, uh, you know, obviously, obviously um, being around this long that there's something I'm doing right. And, and so then, you know, I, I try to pass on what, you know, I had good veterans when I was coming up. And, you know, there's like throughout my career, you know, I've, I, I mean, I started off as one of the biggest prospects, you know, and, and, you know, this is a can't miss guy to having some fluke injuries, fluke things happen. And right. you know what, now I'm looking for a job. And, um, you know, it's one of those things that in the back of my head, you know, like if things went this way or that way, you know, it could have been a lot different, but you know, you, you just, you can't hang your head. You just got to go out there and grind it out every day. Talked about your first call up in 05, what were the circumstances of your first hit? When, where, who off of? Oh, okay. So it was in Cleveland, and it was off Jake Westbrook. It was, uh, I, I believe there was a guy in first and second, and somehow I panicked, swung, and, and it went, like, I see it rolling through the side, like the shortstop, between the shortstop and the third baseman, which I never hit a ball to the opposite field. You know, I pull everything. So it's kind of ironic that my first hit would be, um, to left field. But you'll never forget that. And where's oh, the ball? No. Well, it's in my, my house, in my office, sitting up on a, in a little case, you know, it says first hit on it. I can't remember the exact date, but yeah, it's exciting. You had on the last day of, was it the 2012 season with the White Sox? Three home runs? Yes. You are only one of four players that have ever done that. Last game of the regular season, hit four home runs in a game, or three home runs in a game. What was that like? You know, it was kind of funny because uh, during that time, Longoria did it that day too. Oh, did he so, really? So the, the funny thing is, is that it was going on in Tampa, but there, you know, we we're in Cleveland, and uh, it, it was a random timeout call where Robin, the manager at the time, came came out and had a meeting at the at the mound, knowing that I had two home runs. I think it was like the eighth or inning or something. And he came out and he's like, I just wanted to tell you, he's like, Longoria hit three home runs today. <laughs> he's like, I, I want you, I want you to go up there and try to hit a home run. And I was, I thought it was hilarious because it's like, you know, we had a meeting on the mound for him just kind of jokingly because it was the last game and we were out and, and, you know, he just wanted, you know, just come out and say that, you know, just to be funny. And then lo and behold, the opportunity comes up and, and, wow. and ended up hitting it. Four times in history, two times done on the same, same day, day with yeah. Longoria and yourself. The days at Tampa Bay, uh, especially the, the playoff and, and being able to do what you did, that pinch hit home run, got the game in extra innings at Yankee Stadium, for goodness sakes, and then the Rays go on and get in the uh, playoffs w at, via the wild card. That highlight of the career? I would say so, yeah. You know, I've, had, I've had been uh, fortunate enough to be able to get into the situations with, uh, where, where, where things really matter. And, you know, and having a little bit of success in those times, I, I really believe that, you know, now I've, I've kind of learned to use those situations to my advantage. And, you know, it's great when you know that the manager's looking like, hey, you know, we got to get him up there. And, you know, we got to get this game tied. We got to win this game. And knowing that the, you know, managers throughout my career have been like, okay, this is time for him to go now. So, and knowing that they have the trust and, you know, myself believing that I'm going to do it and, and everything working out with that way. Five different major league teams, as I mentioned, mm -hmm. right? Started out with Oakland. Yep. Give me the order. Oakland, Tampa. Tampa. And then I went to the White Sox. Mm -hmm. And then I went to the Yankees. And then I was moved to Baltimore, where I went up to the big leagues um, right. with Baltimore. And then from Baltimore, I went to, I went to Toronto. That's where I went. <laughs> yeah, it's, I, it's not easy to remember all this. So does. Obviously, you spent different times with, with the team, some more than others. But basically, is the, is the major league experience, because I, the, what I'm getting to is we hear about the Cardinals way, the Cardinals way. Yeah. And you haven't been up there with the big yet, but you're in the organization. Are all the organizations similar or are they a lot different? It's, it's night and day. Wow. You never know what you're getting. It, it's been, 
Um, I've been in some real good ones, and then I've been in some other ones that are kind of shaky. And, um, you know, like to see the way, like it was a breath of fresh air is what I said when I got here. To, like just to see how, how this team is reacting and, and the way that they, they preach how to play the game. Um, you know, like I, I think it was the first game that I was here. I came back in the clubhouse and, and the guys were cheering for the big team on, the, you know, watching the game on, wow. the, on the TV. And I was like, that's, that's awesome to see because most of the teams that you're with are like, you know, oh, I hope they struggle so that they need somebody they, else. They you know, club, whereas right. this is like everyone here believes that they're they're ready to go help. And, you know, and they want the the, team, the big team to keep keep winning. And, you know, they want to be a part of um, something special. And it seems like if you do your job, you're going to get that opportunity, even with a team playing as well as the Cardinals. Everybody that seems to be called up from the Redbirds is contributing. So you put your time in, you do your job. I think mm -hmm. that's karma. That's positive karma. It, it's part of the reason why organizations are different. Uh, I would imagine communication. That's the biggest thing I think that I see that the, um, that uh, goes on between different organizations is you know like you'll talk to one AAA manager and they'll be like I don't know what's going on, and you, you know they they have there's like a huge disconnect between the the big leagues and the the minor leagues. Right. You know, and it's it might not be the player that should be going up. It might not be the player that's doing you know whatever it is. It's just the big leagues calls down and says, hey, I need this guy. And, you know, without any kind of input from what's going on or, you know, that, that type of that type of thing. But communication, I think, is the biggest difference that I've seen between most organizations. When you sign with them, the Cardinals, what do they say to you? You're, you're a veteran. You've been mm -hmm. in the big leagues. You're not a youngster just yeah. coming up. So what, I'm sure they don't make promises, but what do they say to you, Dan? Well, I mean, they, they, you know, I guess, I guess my, my role is kind of, you know, written out. Like, you, you know what I'm saying? It's not like you're guessing at what you're getting. You know, when somebody comes out and a team comes to get me, they know what they're getting. You know, I get the right. track record. This is this is what you're getting. So, um, you know, obviously that they know that that gives them depth. And they, they know that, um, like, even at the minor league level, that, that they're going to get guys to be able to, you know, to learn and hear what I have to say and, and you know, kind of guide them on the right path and help help any way possible. Um, but, uh, of course, they also know that you get the lefty bat, you know, that a veteran situation that, um, you know, if you're called upon to be a bench guy, if you're called upon to be a starter, that they, they know what they're getting from me. If things broke the other way, you may have been a professional hockey player, right? Whew, uh, I don't know. I, I mean, it would be nice to think that way, but it, I, but you I, love the game. You played I do, hockey. I do love the game, but I do know how much work it is. Like I, I know how much work I put in now and to, to compete at this level. You know what I'm saying? You know, because people see they come to the game, they're like, oh, that looks like fun. I, you know, I wish I could do that. But until they they actually try to do what we do and you know the work that it takes to to get yourself on the field the work that you have to do the ground balls the the hitting and everything else that's just part of the game you know but the the workouts the the conditioning parts and and the the, the parts that you miss just about everything that could possibly happen in your family's lives um, oh gosh there's so much any, going anything on. at home like anything that goes on at home you're you're miss out on it's not like we could get okay i call in sick today no it doesn't matter what's going on you're you're gonna be there and you know the traveling's tough I and mean, there's so much stuff that goes into right to actually get, getting on the field and playing the game by the but, way if it was hockey you'd probably be long retired well, at the age of 35. so yes. with that said Again, you are hitting the ball well. You're playing well. Hopefully, you get that call up. You're 35. You'll be 36 in August. Yes. How much longer do you want to do this thing for? You know what? I've, I've always said until, until I can't. You know, uh, until I, I don't feel like I can compete. You know, like right now, I feel like I'm competing. You know, like right. I go out there. I, I notice, you know, like, like I know that they're careful when I get up to the plate. You know, I, I know, you know what I'm saying? I, I look around, and I see, I see that, that the fire's still there, you know, for myself. I go out there. I love competing. I love it, and if I if I can't compete at the level that I want to, then I'll, I'll walk away. Or if somebody doesn't give me a job, well but, said. But if, if if they don't want to give me a job, I'm still going to scratch a claw they, and get back in somehow. They keep paying you, you keep hitting the ball, you're going to keep right. playing. We like to end all our interviews with something called Five for the Road. So I need quick answers to these five questions. Oof. Ready? Favorite pro team of all time? Don't give me the Minnesota Cardinals. Twins. Okay, thank you. Favorite pro athlete of all time? Ooh, Kirby Puckett. Kirby Puckett, the late Kirby Puckett. He was fun to watch. Favorite music or musician or group? What do you oh, like to listen to? What I like to, I, I mean, I like the whole spectrum of music. I, I don't have a certain, but I'll, I'll go alternative, alternative rock. Just What's your walk-up song? Safety Dance. No, it's not. I promise you. <laughs> I'm not, I, I can't make that up. A safety, okay, about base listen, and, listen, and baseball. I'll give you a little story behind this. Okay, so it happened one day that I was just like, I, I can't remember if I was whistling it when I walked in the clubhouse. And in the club, you like, took it upon himself to go up and switch my music to it 
and I, I, I swear to you, I went, stuck? I went off that day. Like, <laughs> I, mean, I mean, I just killed the ball, and I was like, I'm not changing. And so then it's always stuck since. So you're telling me a baseball player is superstitious. Wow, uh, never, I mean, never heard figure. that before. I, I call it a creature of habits. <laughs> Favorite movie of all time? Oh, my gosh, tough. Um, I'll go with Shawshank. Uh, Shawshank is, I mean, it's such a good, good classic. Choice. Yeah. Good choice. But like, I mean, you know, if you, it, depending on what genre, you know, because I love well, watching comedies, you know. If so. it was base, if it was a baseball movie. Bull Durham. Bull Durham. Yes. And then finally, favorite television show. Game of Thrones. Game of Thrones. Without a doubt. Yeah. The, I mean, it's like watching a movie every, every week. I love it. Dan, we love watching you play here, awesome. but we hope we can watch you play in St. Louis. Sounds Lewis good to me. Before too long. All right. Thanks so much for joining All right. us. Thanks for having We'll me. take a break. Overtime is next. Okay, from one first baseman to another, former Memphis Tigers slugger Tucker Tubbs is off to a terrific start in his young professional career. Tubbs had a monster senior season for the guys in blue and gray, and that was parlayed into a ninth round selection by the Boston Red Sox in the recent draft. The former Collierville product has played in six games as of our taping and was hitting 350 with seven RBI and seven runs scored, playing for the Red Sox Class A short season affiliate in Lowell, Massachusetts. And I caught up with Tucker just prior to his departure. Well, Tucker, congratulations. Uh, you must be still flying on cloud nine, ninth round pick of the Boston Red Sox. How do you feel? Uh, I feel great, you know, uh, very excited to go start my professional career. Um, dreamed about this day for a long time, you know, and uh, it's, it's good to finally see it come true, get drafted. After the year you had, you had a big year. What were your expectations once the draft came around? Uh, you know, n nothing's ever for sure with the draft. You know, you, you hear all these things, but I mean, you're never for sure until it actually happens. I mean, you, you, you can hope as much as you want, but, but, but it's not for sure until it happens. And so I was, I was optimistic. I was, I was hoping I would get picked up and at least get a shot, you know, and then, then, you know, ninth round, that's, that's incredible. And I'm, I'm extremely excited. Seems like it's a lot different from some of the other sports. NBA draft, they work out the players. They talk to the players with football. They know pretty much the teams that are interested. Do you even hear from teams that are interested in you? Do you get a chance to talk to anybody? Uh, yeah, I mean, a few few teams called me before, you know, just asked me basic, like, questionnaire questions, like, you know, my parents' name, stuff like that. Uh, I mean, and then I guess they, they came and saw me play uh, throughout the season. But, yeah, just heard from them, like, once or twice. And then, I mean, that was about it before, before the draft. What was it like uh, when you heard, when you got that call, and then eventually, just a few minutes later, your name called in the ninth round, and the Boston Red Sox, one of the great organizations in baseball? Uh, it was something special. I mean, I got, uh, I got a text from the scout, Danny Watkins, uh, in the eighth round. He asked me if I, was, uh, if I was watching, if I was doing good. I was like, yeah, I'm doing good. I'm watching, I've been watching the draft. He's like, all right, just hang in there. Next round came around. Um, about 10 picks before Boston was up again. He called me and he's like, all right, this, is, this could be it right here. Get ready, be watching. If we pick you, be ready, be ready to leave pretty soon. And so, so, so we watched and uh, my name was called and it was, it was, it was special. Like, I, I imagine it was also special for your family. Yeah. Uh, I mean, they were, they're uh, obviously there with me watching. Um, my mom cried, my dad, he was super pumped for me. It was, it was a special moment for us, and we were all pretty excited. You were a terrific athlete at Collierville, but when you played at Collierville High School, knowing that you were going to go to Memphis before you ever stepped onto the field, did you think that you had the uh, ability to become a professional ball player? Um, I think I knew I had it in me. You know, I just had to, fi I, I had to find it here. Um, definitely a great decision coming here, and uh, – they, the coaches really helped develop me into the, the best player I could possibly be here. And um, I don't think I, I could have gotten to where I am today without, without coming to Memphis and playing under these coaches. You had uh, an incredible career. The numbers uh, proved that. But this year was sensational. One of the top sluggers in the country, Louisville slugger, third team All-American, home runs, RBIs, on-base percentage, why did it come together so well this year? You know, just I think things happen for a reason. And um, I ended up not going to play summer ball last summer. I had, uh, I had hand surgery. 
had to take off. Um, but once I recovered from that, it was actually just a six week six week recovery time. No no uh, no rehab or anything like that. I was able to you know really get stronger, really focus on on hitting every day in the cages. You know, up here. Um, and then I, I it just I worked on my approach a lot with Coach Green, and um, I just tried to make myself comfortable in the batter's box. And I mean, I really I really tuned into my to to a good approach, and I, it, it it worked out for me. What do you think the biggest challenge is that awaits you as a professional ball player? Uh, you know, just getting used to uh, basically playing every day. And, I mean, it's it's going to be my job. And I, being consistent, you know, uh, playing every day, it's going to be it's gonna be a grind for sure. And, um, you know, here we played on the weekend, and then we, we take the four days off during the week and then do it again. So uh, I think just the, the travel every day and playing every day is going to be – it's going to be different. Not only were you able to turn this into a professional career, but you were able to become an academic All-American, the first ever baseball player from Memphis, only the third athlete overall to achieve that. You have to be very proud of yourself and your parents, probably Coach Rock as well. The, the most proud, of, uh, the proudest uh, part of what you've accomplished is probably that, right? Yeah, I, I, I would agree. I think my parents are probably most proud about the uh, academic All-American. Um, it just, I mean, academics have, have uh, always been very important to me. And my time here at Memphis, I made sure that I, I took care of business, not only on the field, but also in the classroom. And I, I put a lot of effort in, into my schoolwork, and uh, it, it paid off. We hope for a, a long career for you playing baseball, but you always got the fallback later in life if you need to. You got the degree, uh, certainly a good major that uh, you went to school for. So you got that for yourself, which is nice. Yeah, yeah. Uh, a degree in accounting, I mean, it's, it's not a bad plan B, um, but, but, you know, I'm, I'm going to put all my effort into, into being a professional baseball player now, and that's my number one focus, and um, uh, that's, what I, that's what I hope works out for me. You have people like Coach Rock, whose son is a professional player. You've had a lot of teammates, I'm sure, and people that you know uh, that are in the professional ranks, so I'm sure there's a lot of people to lean on, to talk to for advice and just, you know, pick their brain a little bit. Yeah, I've uh, I played with a a bunch of good good teammates, and um, actually I had Jacob Wilson call me yesterday. He uh, he actually started his professional career um, in the same league that I'm going to, the New York Penn League. Um, he he basically gave me the rundown and how it, how it goes up there every day, and um, gave he he basically said if you need anything, you know, call me. And then another one was uh, Brent Delukic. He did the same thing. Mm -hmm. He uh, he he filled me in with a little knowledge and. Uh, um, he also said, if you need anything, you know, call me anytime. So I appreciate both of them. Well, you did your family proud. You did the school proud. You did yourself proud. We'll be keeping up with you. Looking forward to watching you play professionally wherever it is, and hopefully one day it leads to the major leagues. Thanks so much for joining us, Tucker. Best of luck to you. Yes, sir. Thank you. And best of luck to Tucker. Before we say goodnight, the Grizzlies have been very busy as they added former L.A. Clippers wing Matt Barnes in a trade last week and then selected Jarrell Martin out of LSU in last Thursday's draft. Also on draft night, the Grizzlies acquired former Kentucky product Andrew Harrison in a deal from the Phoenix Suns for veteran forward John Luer. Harrison was taken 44th overall by the Suns. Now this past Monday, both rookies met the media at FedEx Forum. Jarrell, you started at LSU as a, as a three. They moved you inside to a four. Is that what you're comfortable playing, and why was that uh, something that worked out for you once you got moved inside? Uh, yes, sir. I started off playing the three my freshman year. Uh, my sophomore year, they moved me on down and playing the four. Uh, no, it, it translated over uh, perfectly, and it worked out fine for me. I was able to uh, gain rebounds and battle down low and you know, still use my versatility uh, you know, to explode past uh, bigger defenders and you know, make explosive plays to the rim. Andrew, can you talk about where are you at, at right now? How do you feel about how everything has, has transpired to this point? Um. I mean, to be honest, all that really doesn't matter. I'm here now, and I'm just happy to be here. Um, can't really go back on the past. I'm just happy that I made the decision I made, and I, I enjoyed college for my two years. And now I'm here with the Memphis Grizzlies just trying to make the team and just happy with my decision. Chris, as, as you know, both these guys played for former Memphis Tigers head coaches. Mm -hmm. How much – conversation with Cal or Johnny Jones or, or both of them did you have about these guys and how they would be acclimated to this particular city? Well, our staff uh, 
has extensive contacts over our overall group with both Kentucky and LSU, and we tapped into those. And these are obviously players that's very easy to, to, to watch during their college career. They're on prime programs in a great league and NCAA tournament teams. So you know, we got very favorable reviews from both of their coaching staffs, but what sealed the deal with them is what you saw on the tape. You know, they both have unique talents. Uh, Drew being a, a bigger guard with the versatility to swing between off guard and point guard and, and defend both positions and get in the lane. Uh, and Jarrell with his ability to attack the basket and score through contact, and play in the open court, uh, and the productivity that he showed during the SEC portion of the season this year. Um, you know, we didn't have to talk to too many people to convince ourselves that those were two players worthy of draft, and their play uh, spoke for them. Both players will be a part of the Grizzlies summer league team in Orlando, Florida, although Martin won't suit up because of a foot injury. And that'll do it for now. Have a great week, and we'll see you next time. Production funding for Sports Files is made possible in part by... Infinity of Memphis has moved to Germantown Road just half mile north of Wolf Chase Galleria and is proud to support WKNO for its quality broadcasting and service to our community. Quality and service? No wonder Infinity of Memphis feels at home on WKNO.